In this unit, we're looking at the ways globalization affects us and other people in the world. OK, let's start our listening practice. Listening task one. You're going to hear two people giving their ideas about what globalization is. Do they talk about any of the same subjects? Well, I'm not really 100% sure what the actual definition of globalization is, other than I think there's many different ways and many different meanings to it, and that there can be economic meanings and uh, sort of humanitarian meanings, communication meanings, and really I guess it's about the, the world becoming smaller, it's about communications improving um, between different societies and cultures, and uh, movement of people increasing, transport is becoming easier and of course economic globalization which means the movement of currencies and some economies and some countries becoming more powerful and taking over the, the global market. Uh, so my perception of globalization um, on a personal level in a musician is that um, the internet means that the the world is smaller and you can uh, you can be in contact with people and reach people with for example music or other communication easier and more people can be contacted and you can share ideas um, but that could be it's a double-edged sword in that you you could have an over -satur saturation of people and ideas and music so much so that people listen less because there's so much um, so it works both ways on a personal level as a musician anyway listening task one answers did they talk about any of the same subjects well they both talked about the world becoming smaller and they both mentioned communication listening task two now you're going to hear the first part of a discussion between me, Donny, and Cathy. Which of these topics do they mention in relation to globalization? Travel, food, culture, music. Okay. So recently globalization has probably had more negative sort of um, publicity, if you like, than positive. Mm -hmm. So, carrying on in that theme, what, why do you think that is? What what could be negative about globalisation? Can I just ask first, in your opinion, both of your opinions, what is globalisation? What do people mean when they say globalisation? That's a really interesting question because we talked about this earlier mm -hmm. with Tom, and that's the first thing he said as well. And I think. Everybody has a different definition of it, don't they? Yeah. It's actually... Sorry. No, no, go. I was just thinking. I don't know. The, apparently, the, the word globalisation was first coined in the 1960s, but it didn't come oh. into popular use until the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. And it goes hand in hand with this thing that people say a lot now, which is the global village. People mm. talk about a global village. The world is getting smaller. Yeah. And I'm not really convinced that that's true. I don't think the world is getting smaller for the majority of people who mm, live here. I yeah, I think it's not getting smaller, but I think what they mean is that there's more access, like what we were talking about with people travel a lot more. Going on the Ryanair plane is like going on a bus now. So mm. um, even people who don't have a lot of money can go travel a lot more. And I, when I think about globalization, maybe it's because I'm studying food right now, but the first thing that pops into my head is sure. food. Mm. But I think that that's actually a positive side of globalization, that I mean, the sharing of, of cultures and knowing about different cultures, foods that you would never know about, you know, 50 years ago unless you went to, you would never know about certain types of Indian food unless you went to live in India. Yeah. So I think what they say about the global village is like that everything's getting smaller in that like we supposedly know each other and know about each other's cultures more, sure. but in reality I'm, I'm not so sure if that's true either. I think yeah. we know like stereotypes, you know, mm. Perhaps. like how many times have people 
People tell me a lot of times I don't seem like I'm American. People are always telling that to me when I'm abroad, but that's because they think they know everything about mm. American culture because American culture takes over advertising and TV and music. Or a certain image of American yeah, culture. Yeah, a certain image, and, and, and if you don't match it, then you don't seem American. But. Yeah. One thing mm. I wanted to ask you about food was, you go to a supermarket and you're looking, for example, the fruit and vegetables, and you see all kinds of exotic fruits that are imported from Brazil yeah. and Peru and Fiji yeah. and places like that. And you think, is it really the best use of our resources to transport these vitamins and these food from across the other side of the world in aeroplanes and in ships mm. to, to here, where actually we have plentiful sources of, of all yeah. the kinds of things that, that, that we can buy. Is it not just a bit of a waste? Yeah, that goes, that's really concerning, like, the whole green question. I mean, that's a huge controversy. controversy. And I do think that it's a big waste because something they talk a lot about in the United States is, like, the loss of seasonal eating. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. it's happening. Strawberries in the winter. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Tomatoes all year round. Uh, papaya, papaya in Spain when really, besides the Canary Islands, they're not really cultivating papaya. And that's something interesting because people think that they're eating papaya, but then when you go to the Canary Islands or you go to somewhere where they grow it in South America or West Africa and you eat a papaya that's mm. local, it's like a whole different, different thing. Yeah. yeah, the papaya we eat here is just like the diluted version of, of a papaya. Yeah. And so then you start thinking about that like as a seed in terms of all different other cultural ideas. Like, do we really know other cultures just because there's more contact between them? Yeah. I don't know. I remember looking at, at the politics of food and globalization uh, when I worked in politics and we were studying the number of chickens that were uh, exported from Britain to the Netherlands and the number of chickens that were imported from the Netherlands to Britain <laughs> in the same year. And it was millions upon millions of chickens that went one way and went the other way. And the whole process, the whole... Uh, it's complete uh, it, insanity. It was insanity yeah. and it was totally unnecessary as well. Yeah. Totally Listening task two. Answers. So, did they mention travel? Yes. Food? Yes. In particular, fruit and chickens. Culture? Yes. Music? No. Listening task three. The conversation continues. Is the conversation only about positive points, only negative points, or a mixture of positive and negative? So we have come up with a few, <laughs> quite a few negatives. Yeah. There are, there, are, there are positive things, I suppose, in terms of, as you mentioned, uh, Cathy, an awareness of other cultures. and mm. um, Certainly the internet has been an absolutely phenomenal yeah. development in human knowledge and our, our access to information about other cultures and I think that helps to uh, make people more tolerant and more curious yeah, and, and, and more accepting of other people perhaps. Yeah I think the curiosity thing is really important like actually in the end I think globalization in its innocent definition maybe of, of the world supposedly getting smaller I don't think there's anything negative within that I think that's very very positive but I think in the end what people talk about or what globalization ends up being about is about dominance mm, and yeah. mm -hmm. some cultures dominating other cultures because you know the whole concern about people are always talking about the concern about losing their culture now yeah. with immigration and with globalization and all that and that's not really about mixing cultures that's about domination mm, mm -hmm. of one yeah. culture over another so. the, the thing that sort of comes to my mind first and foremost when you talk about globalization is trade yeah you know this this the fact that it should be good it should be good because smaller poorer countries have got bigger markets therefore they should be getting money in but it doesn't seem to actually work that way because if you still look at the distribution of wealth you're still looking at the top few countries making the most money out of the products from the poorest countries so I don't know yeah 
I think that's a big problem too with like for instance in Mali in West Africa where they grow a ton a ton of peanuts but then they are exporting all of them and then they're getting like these luxurious products of peanut butter sent back to them yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the chickens all yeah, yeah exactly it's the same thing and so that's why I think it's really all about this like power dynamic in the end um, yeah yeah I think you're right and you could say that uh, when people talk about globalization they say that for example Mali as you said the doors have opened up to Mali when they talk about free trade but what they mean is the doors have opened for for capital for money to go in and out and especially out but for the vast majority of people yeah, who live in exactly. Mali, I don't think they have any chance of no. ever crossing a border in their lives. No, yeah. None of them. And so when people talk about the global village, I think it's it's not so much a village as it is a place, for, like a global bank maybe, where money to, mm. to travel around, but it's more difficult for people to, to go anywhere. A lot of them are stuck exactly where they are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're a little bit less stuck, I think. Which is why I think sometimes like we're a little bit too idealizing of mm. the past and like have this n- nostalgia mm. that yeah. really like I personally would not really want to like only live in my tiny village and never yeah. be able to yeah. read books about other places or step outside of that village and see a different lifestyle. Absolutely. So in the end, in the end, I think that people need to see like the more positive side of globalization. Also because if they see the more positive, maybe this is really idealistic, but if they see the more positive side of globalization, then they can do something actually good with it, you know? Yeah. Like learning of all these languages, that everyone's so into learning languages. Listening task three, answers. Was the conversation about only positive points, only negative points? or a mixture of both positive and negative. There was a mixture of both positive and negative. Listening task 4. Now Tom and I discuss fair trade and globalisation. What's your understanding of fair trade? Is it the same as what you hear? Which countries are mentioned? In which countries does Tom think a lot of people know about fair trade? So we're going to talk a little bit about fair trade. And fair trade is the concept of giving people in developing countries a fair price for their products or their labour. Now this is becoming quite a, a successful movement over the last few years, has been becoming. Um, why is that, do you think, Katie? Why is it important for combating globalisation? Well, I think it's kind of... It's funny because it's almost a result of globalisation. It's a result of people having more access to information about where they... It's two things. First of all, you can get goods from developing countries that you never could in the past. Mm-hmm. So I think the process goes something like, oh, hooray, I can get... Um, all these different things from different countries that I never could before, how fantastic What's a specific example? I mean I I know one of like the the coffee farmers in Colombia for example. Yeah, chocolate, coffee bananas pretty much anything that comes from a developing country, I think you know, essentially it used to be very expensive um, or difficult to get and then because of opening markets and globalisation and growth in global trade suddenly these things became cheaper At the same time, I think globalisation makes free flow of information more possible. So then people started to become aware of, oh, these pineapples that I'm buying come from a country where people have to work 12 hours a day to make... one dollar. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. it's about freedom of choice from the buyer's point of view as well, isn't it? And uh, knowing where you're buying things. And in the UK, for example, they mark everything with a fair trade sticker in like supermarkets logo, now yeah. and you pay a bit more but you know that, that money more of that money is reaching the pocket of the farmer in Africa or, or wherever and actually a lot of the big producers of things now it's, it's becoming almost standard on things like chocolate Cadbury's all Cadbury's chocolate now is fair trade really yeah um, so it's getting much easier to buy it because it used to be you had to really seek it out but I think that this is actually something positive to come out of globalisation. And it allows the the public to vote for ethical farming and produce. 
Yeah. It's a form of voting, isn't it, really? If you go and spend 10 pence more on a chocolate bar because it's got a fair trade sticker, and I would, you know, yeah. I wouldn't mind paying 10, no, 15% more every time for a fair trade. Yeah. To the point where now it becomes frustrating if you can't find... Partic- there are particular products that I... I'm really put off buying if they're not fair trade, particularly things like bananas, pineapples, yeah. uh, those kind of things where... But I, I mean, I don't really haven't seen the equivalent in Spain yet, and I'm not no. sure whether that will take off here or whether it originally came from the US. I don't know where it came from, but no, me neither. I've seen it a lot more in the UK than other countries. Mm. I think maybe Australia is quite it's quite popular there, but I can't really remember. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that that is <clears throat> quite a positive development, yeah. and I hope it continues. Well, it's initiatives like that that are going to really help combat the negative effects of globalisation, I think. Listening task four. Answers. What's your understanding of fair trade? Is it the same as what you heard? Tom described it as the concept of giving people in developing countries a fair price for their products or their labour. Which countries are mentioned? Colombia, the UK, Spain, America and Australia are mentioned. In which countries does Tom think a lot of people know about fair trade? The UK, Australia and America. You've listened to a lot of natural discussion there. Well done. <laughs>